Okie dokie, so welcome to part three of the Fell Seal tier list. So, I actually haven't uh, put up the uh, the second part yet, but I did want to address one thing I can pretty much guarantee ended up coming up. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a little thingy here, uh, just kind of showing why the Sorcerer is a little bit of a liability here. So, here's the thing. Their kind of direct power in a lot of cases uh, more or less scales off of them being directly close to something. So basically, like, if they're at a distance, they end up losing about 50% of their attack power, give or take. So they more or less want to fly in for one big sweep, right? Um, and so, for example, even under basically, uh, well, this isn't exactly perfectly ideal circumstances because she doesn't actually have the range to, get, to reach everything in the map here, but... What we're looking at here is a situation where she's got an Eruptor active, so she's already getting the bonus from this. She's got uh, Bloodlust active, uh, which increases uh, damage based off of her health. Uh, her health is practically bottomed out at this point, um, as well as Mind Expert, as well as Adaptive Affinity uh, active, which gives her, gives her another 35% uh, uh, power with that particular element, and even in this case, like, she basically ends up uh, going and doing a pretty good number across the entire map, but the thing is, this is, like, one of those moves that feels good to use, but it's a massive downside. Um, when I used this earlier in the fight, she ended up losing a third of her health bar, as well as getting her, le getting her arms broken, and getting poisoned due to counter debuffs, while buffing three different enemies on the map at the same time, uh, whereas, like, if we go and use this, she's just dead now. Uh, so she ends up getting level up, but there you go. She gets counter magic. If there's more than a you know one or two uh, units using counter magic, there's a pretty good chance that unit just gets completely annihilated from the first time that they use it. Like it's a big old liability in a lot of ways, and this is why I was saying stuff like the uh, the Ursini there um, is going to be somebody that's going to typically do the same job a lot better, uh, being able to just basically walk up and self destruct, and uh, you know not really have to worry about any of this. On top of that, there's actually one more thing that I wanted to mention that I completely forgot about last time, which I believe is on this guy over here. Uh, yeah, Victory Dance. So I totally forgot about this. Also, I love that this guy's name is Orange Demon and he's blue, but um, so as, as far as the types of passives that you can stack up on all the monster units and stuff like that, uh, one of the things that's notable uh, is uh, stuff like uh, stuff like Victory Dance here. So it, what it says here is, upon felling an enemy, the character and all adjacent allies will receive one random buff, while ad adjacent enemies re uh, receive one random debuff. And there's a reason why, and I completely forgot about this, uh, but the, this is one of the reasons that this is such a dang strong unit. Um, because yes, other classes can do this, but many of them will be in other places. Like stuff like the Arpia, which we'll cover later, is typically going to be flying around. Uh, so, uh, stuff like the Ursini won't be there to receive those debuffs, and they probably won't be getting their wins with their regular attacks. Uh, but when it comes to something like the uh, Vengrel, usually they're up there in the front, and usually uh, they're going to be kind of bullying things around them. So they're either surrounded by enemies or surrounded by allies a good bit of the time. On top of this, uh, they typically can afford to have pretty high movement, and the one weakness that they do have, one of their colors can completely get rid of. Um, so, either way, uh, basically, this, uh, this whole victory dance thing, uh, it's one of the reasons that they can stack up so dang well. So, like, let's say they go and they pick on some weaker enemies, they end up crit-killing something right out of the gate. Immediately, they end up getting something like a re-raise out of it, or they get a uh, attack bonus or whatever else, and there's actually, um, uh, so, one thing that's also worth mentioning is that when it says 1 plus random buffs and debuffs, I think what it's trying to say is that it scales off of just how surrounded they are. Because I've seen this throw out like 3 buffs on them, just like 3 random buffs at the same time. So this is basically like, more or less that ability that the uh, the gambler has, except they just it can just kind of do it whenever. Like, they, as soon as they kill something, they just have a trigger. So, very, very, very strong thing there. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get back to the tier list at this point, uh, going back to how we were doing it before. Um, so, uh, let's get right back into this thing. So, ooh, whoops. Uh, hold on, let's fix that. There we go. Hopefully that didn't get too janky. Oh, man, I hate that. My, uh... Something's going on with my mouse, so it keeps deciding to uh, to resize windows instead of uh, instead of just selecting them. Okay, so let's go ahead and carry on here. All right, um, werewolf. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, go pull these up real quick because, in my opinion, werewolves are like. <laughs> I got I got to put them down into D for me personally. This is before we go into the wiki. I'm sure there'll be more to it. Um, but as far as I've seen it, we're talking like 
close range, uh, fairly limited in terms of uh, their actual utility, very difficult to get. Um, kind of a cool idea, but let's go ahead and see what I'm missing here, just to, just to make sure. So, growth-wise, great attack, uh, great health, uh, okay everything else, but uh, let's go over their lists now. So, I, I want to point out that this is going to be the first uh, first one that you need a crest uh, to unlock. So, the uh, the Werewolf, Princess, Lord, Lich, um, as well as some others are going to require a crest. Uh, they require specific craftable components um, and or uh, side quests to unlock. Okay, so, uh, we've got... Uh, so, for the first move, we've got Bite. Uh, so, it's going to do one times physical damage and has a 62% chance of inflicting poison. Uh, you have weapons that can already do this by this point. Leap. Character displaces themselves to the target location. Cannot be a water tile. Deals 0.75 physical damage to the targets in there yet around them. Cannot be used if there's no target. So, it's basically a dropping move. It's good for getting around and attacking at the same time, so it's got some good utility. Uh, Offense-wise, it's definitely lacking. Right, regenerate. Uh, it's going to be uh, uh, grants the target uh, renewal uh, as well as removing poison, bleed, blind, root, mute, mute and weaken. Um, so basically, just uh, it's a combination of a refresh and a renew at the same time. It's okay, but yeah, it's basically taking two actions, two kind of uh, uh, two things that you could do before and combining them into one. It's all right. Like it's strictly all right. Counter cripple. This is actually pretty useful. So counters any offensive action uh, on the character by inflicting the offender with cripple, uh, which disables skill uh, uh, any kind of skill type attacks. Um, I would say that's probably the most useful thing of the class in my opinion. It's actually one of the reasons that it's uh, a little bit of a liability to uh, use something like the sorcerer there because they almost always get crippled. Um, fetid breath. Uh, actually, come to think of it, man, this island's got a weird uh, werewolf problem if everybody's got counter cripple. Okay, Fetid Breath deals 0.95 magic damage and a cone with a chance to inflict Weaken. Which is okay. Like, Weaken's a good debuff. Um, it's using their Mind Score, which is not really one of the stats that they're running. Um, and it has to attack in a cone, so it, it, just kind of a, a weird way to inflict Weaken, but okay, it's there, sure. Uh, by the time that you get them, though, this is kind of way later in the game. Usually, you won't necessarily be going out of your way to use Weaken, but alright, it's just another thing in their pile, it's not a big deal. Okay, Focus Rage. Regular attacks use all current MP to inflict more damage. All well and good, but I'm pretty sure the AI realizes this because I constantly see them getting siphoned. Um, so, not to mention, MP is kind of a valuable commodity, so something like MP Shield, for example, uh, let's say even you get drained, but you regenerate, like, 2 MP or something like that uh, at the start of just whatever your situation is, that's still enough to take an entire hit for you. Uh, using your MP bar to do more damage, uh, it says 0.025 uh, 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 per bonus per one MP. So <laughs> you're not really getting a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of bonus there. But additionally, again, they won't be able to use a, a lot of their other skills if they're using their MP to attack. Um, so, immediately, anybody that's going and using the main feature of this thing is kind of locked into basic attacks and or ultra cheapo skills. Now, this works great when combining with something like a Gadgeteer, uh, but, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, <clears throat> I would say it's kind of iffy as far as, as far as whether you really want to commit to that, you know? <clears throat> and it's niche, you know, if you, uh, let's say, combine them with another Gadgeteer, uh, you have them use an Energizer over and over on them, then you can actually get some pretty solid numbers out of these guys. So, it's got its niche, it's not great, remember that if you aren't using the Energizer strategy, you can't use that on yourself, so you would have to have somebody else teaming up with them. So, there's potential here. Actually, combining Werewolf and Templar might be a pretty solid idea, because you can basically siphon, siphon, siphon Werewolf. You know, it's it, it could work for something like that. Anyway, so, it's got potential. I don't think it's worth the effort, but it's got potential. Uh, anyways, uh, carrying on, uh, then we've got uh, Cunning Slash, so deals 0.75 physical damage and bypasses counter abilities. Um, cannot miss, so, alright. Uh, we've kind of seen that before. Uh, then we've got Howl, uh, deals one times mind damage in a large area and has a chance of inflicting root. Uh, potentially useful, though most characters have a ranged attack uh, by the time you unlock this class, so it may not be doing what you're hoping it's doing. 
then we get to one of their best things, uh, and personally the thing that I really liked using this, uh, well, not really liked using, uh, begrudgingly accepted using this class for, uh, which was their uh, their passive No Weakness 2. Uh, so basically it allows you to stack No Weakness um, by, um, uh, by uh, having a second rank of the thing. So increases the character's chance of increasing a critical hit by 25%, stacks with No Weakness. Uh, for those that are wondering about the name, it's K-N-O-W, kind of No, like you know the weakness. Anyway, um, from there we have Blood Trophy, uh, which is their most expensive move, uh, though it's still only an 18 MP cost on account of, you know, they're kind of burning through their MP already. Uh, deals 1.8 times physical attack damage to the target. If the target is defeated by this ability, it cannot be raised for the rest of the encounter. On Killing Blow, Rebirth will be ignored. Um, and then Mastering the Class gives you 10 extra health, 5 extra attack, and then 2 extra crit. So... Anyway, so, okay, uh, one thing on the notes here, so Focused Rage opens a menu that allows a regular attack or any ability that functions as a regular attack, for example, uh, like Magic Bullet, to be selected. If you're dual wielding, only the first weapon of the swing will get the damage bonus. Uh, so yeah, for anyone that was looking to abuse that with double attacks, ain't happening. Um, so, potentially good, again, on any class that can maybe have a heavier weapon or something a bit more fancy. I feel like that Templar Siphon combo is probably going to be their better bet. Um, or something with mana font. So it's got potential. Uh, it's got potential to be built around. I just feel like it's all down to just, just focused rage. It's like focused rage and no weakness. Their passives are good. Their regular skills, especially for when you get them, are such a friggin' bummer. Like, especially something like their uh, regenerate ability. I want to point out, side effects plus, uh, I think it was a refresh or whatever it was, on the either Plague Doctor or Alchemistic, I'm forgetting off the top of my head, um, will be able to already do this easier and cheaper way earlier in the game. So getting rid of uh, pretty much all debuffs instead of these debuffs, uh, while also healing somebody now instead of waiting for the Renew to trigger. Because uh, Renew, while on paper it would be pretty interesting, usually it's not enough to keep somebody running. It's a pretty small trickle heal. Uh, like, usually you want to run that on something like a tank or something that can actually, like, defend plus renew at the same time in order to actually get the benefit from it. It's, again, a very small amount. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on then. Apparently my throat is just deciding to be very funny today. All right, next up, Vampire. Um, off the top of my head, I feel like this goes into probably a C, but with exceptions. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that up real quick. Now, the reason that I'm saying this, usually the AI vampires are freaking terrifying, but their actual skills are... It's stuff that you've seen before? Again, like just like the werewolf, it's something that you get later on in the game. You specifically uh, have to um, uh, have to get a blood crest in order to even unlock them. But uh, anyway, let's continue on here. So thrown dagger uh, is going to be actually no wait growths right. Growths wise, they're pretty average across the board, though they are pretty good on speed. And you will definitely notice this on AI vampires. That's one of the reasons that they're so scary, especially if you've got one of the like uh, uh, blood, uh, some of the uh, the health stealing uh, like one for all dual pistol vampires. The AI, the AI loves running those, and they will fuck you up. Anyway, um, so let's uh, let's go on here. So. Thrown Daggers. Uh, so this will deal 0.75 magical damage to the target uh, from a distance and has a 75% chance of inflicting bleed. Uh, good as a DOT, not super reliable as the game goes on. Okay, uh, Blood Nova is probably their main, I guess you could say, kind of go-to attack here. So, only costs 14 MP, deals 1.1 times magical damage with attack and mind uh, in a small area, and has a 62% chance of inflicting bleed, so that amount of DOTs is pretty legit. Uh, Shakedown does 0.85 physical damage to the target and attempts to steal a component from them. Why are we still mugging stuff this late in the game? <laughs> Execute. Uh, uh, defense, uh, or sorry, damage from any offensive abilities is increased by 0.45 when a target's HP is below 50% of their maximum. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this is this is interesting. This is exactly like it does in uh, in XCOM or something like that. Um, and what's interesting is I believe this actually can work on something like uh, like Sorcerer there, because I feel like I've seen the AI show up with Execution Sorcerer before, and in those situations it can be really scary. Um, usually you don't want to stay under 50% health anyway, and the AI does a really good job of trying to heal themselves up, so this is, like, this is extremely strong because the AI is extremely good at countering it. When it works, it really works, uh, and then all the rest of the time it's a wasted slot. Um, 
really good on a follow-up move. I forget if this can actually trigger... I wonder if it'll mention it in the notes. No, there are no notes. I was going to say, I don't know if this triggers, but I believe this triggers uh, on the second attack of a double attack build. So if you have something that, let's say, can do 60% or like 55% or something, um, it might be a really good uh, combination with, a, with any kind of dual wielder, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. All right, next is Mute. Uh, counters any offensive action taken on the character by inflicting the offender with Mute. That's actually very good. Again, yet another hard counter to Sorcerers. Uh, Bloodsuck. Deals 0.75 magical damage to the target and absorbs the damage dealt. Uh, deals 0.5 uh, five times more if the target is inflicted with Bleed. Um, so yeah, it's it's a health, move, a health steal move that's awful unless the target is bleeding. Again, this one, I feel like it depends on what difficulty you're on. On normal difficulty, this is really, 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 really good. Um, very hard, or any of the custom difficulties, usually the AI will do a pretty good job of shaking that stuff off. But again, it depends. Um, again, a lot of my opinion at the moment is going to be colored by the fact that I'm doing, like, New Game Plus on the highest difficulty at the moment, and that that kind of thing is just currently unreliable. On, li on lighter difficulties, I would say, yeah, they're, they're, it's okay. Uh, charm. I would say this is probably one of my favorite moves on their list, because it is 100% chance to charm a target. Uh, I believe it cannot actually miss. Uh, so this is extremely strong. It's just basically instant mind control on somebody, um, unless they're immune. So very strong there. Um, and then from there, we've got Night Embrace. Uh, deals uh, 3.2 times physical damage to the target and inflicts uh, sleep if the target is inflicted with bleed. Uh, so essentially an improved back attack from before. However, it takes 30 MP to actually use. Very strong ability uh, if, um, if used at the right moment, but still. Um, and then we've got Bat Form. Uh, character transforms into a swarm of bats when moving. And this is basically just weirder teleport. <laughs> I'm just, you, you kind of just warp between locations, um, except without actually warping. It's weird that they have two things that more or less do the same thing. So, it's funny because the AI loves to use bat form so much in New Game Plus. Uh, it's constantly on every other uh, random unit, it feels like. Um, but that's the thing. So, with all of their abilities, they're, once again, a grab bag of a lot of very kind of all-over-the-place thing. Like, Throne Dagger... Great, it has a chance of inflicting bleed, but it's more or less a I've got nothing better to do type attack um, than it is actually anything directly useful. So it's potentially got utility, it's just not that amazing. Blood Nova, not exactly strong, but it might potentially spread around a lot of bleed. You gotta set up bleed in order to get their best stuff to work. Um, stuff like Night Embrace and Blood Suck are potentially very good, but they're pretty mediocre if you don't have bleed, uh, bleed on there. Like, Night Embrace, uh, the main reason that it's kind of mediocre is just the fact that it takes so much MP to actually use. Um, so, potentially, that uh, Vampire combines really well with, um, uh, what's it, uh, Versatile. So, Versatile on a Vampire, uh, potentially, you could be seeing something to the tune of, like, six times your normal damage, plus the target ends up being put to sleep if that does just kill them with Night Embrace. So, that's fantastic. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm hoping you can kind of see what I mean by, like, a lot of their stuff is pretty situational. Counter Mute is pretty good. Um, you know, uh, usually they'll just switch over to skills rather than trying to get rid of Mute. Um... So I feel like for when you get them in the game, you kind of have to rebuild somebody from the ground up to be better at something like a vampire. Uh, like, I feel like a vampire in general is somebody that you want to get at a lower level in order to get that speed advantage uh, for their stats. Because uh, if you can get that speed advantage, that is really, really, really strong. That would potentially put them way up there. But for all of their skills by themselves, eh, they're kind of mediocre, you know? Um, so it's weird to place them. Personally, I have a pretty low opinion of them because of how much setup their moves take, but they've got a lot of uh, a lot of moves that are potentially very good, though I would personally maybe take something else in that spot. Um, like, I know I would take the the, uh, the Gambler skill set over what they've got here pretty much any, any day of the week, just because of having more options. Like, guaranteed charm is good, but a lot of things will be immune to charm. Uh, stuff like uh, Night Embrace there is good if you've had the time to already set it up, at which point you might already have a win in the bag, you know? Like, most fights are typically going to be decided, or at least have a pretty good... Uh, they're usually a pretty good uh, bit of the way towards being decided within the first couple of rounds. So if you get to the point of using that, then, you know, 
either you've been uh, uh, dumping MP on them to make it happen, or you're already winning anyway. Um, stuff like Shakedown is just weird, because this is just, like, mugging with a different flavor. <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird to see this showing up this late in the game. Um, but yeah, the, the Execute passive is, again, very good on, uh, on anything that is not them. Um, because, technically speaking, most of their stuff, like, I guess Bloodsuck plus, uh, plus Execute could be interesting. Um, and again, the AI using these guys is scary, because they get all those built-up speed bonuses. Um, but, uh, but yeah, personally, I would, I would rate it as a C overall, but it does have its niche potential, if that makes sense. I feel like that one's also gonna get some people pissed, but you know what? Thankfully, thankfully, it is a small enough community that, for the most part, that probably won't happen. <laughs> There's a chance! There's a chance. Alright, anyway, let's go ahead and move on, though. Um, alright, next up, we're gonna do Lord. Um, now, Lord... Okay, Lord is funny. Because it's a class that I unequivocally absolutely freaking love, and I would argue it's at best to be tier. <laughs> so, okay, let's look again, because I know I forgot something here. So, they're above average on most things across the board, except pretty good on health. But the cool thing is, they're one of the most flavorful classes that there is in the entire game. Um, because their entire thing, like, every one of their things on their skill list is just, I, I carried the siege equipment in my pants, don't question me. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Uh, anyway, let's go down the list. Okay, uh, first uh, thing on their list is Scorpio Ballista. Deals 0.9 times physical damage uh, to the target from a distance and has a 75% chance of inflicting defense down. A great opener uh, to go and kind of batter down a bunch of enemy units. Uh, from there, you've got uh, uh, Gemini Flail. Uh, deals 0.8 times physical damage in a cone and has a 75% chance of inflicting attack down. Great little setup move if you're dealing with a bunch of offensive type units. Um, Mass Heal restores uh, one times mind HP in a small area, just a good little heal there. Um, Sagittarian Cavalry deals 0.9 times physical attack and mind damage in a small area and has a 62% chance of inflicting magic down. Honestly, I just love the visuals of this because you just randomly pull out a cavalry charge out of nowhere. It's not an attack you'll probably use that often, but it's just cool to see them going around like, yep. 8 MP cost. Just, I have a bunch of horses, don't question me. <laughs> um, okay, Total Shield is very good. Uh, I would say one of the better abilities to, uh, to kind of have on your counter slot there. So grants defense up, res up to the character after being targeted by any defense, uh, any damaging offensive action. Um, so this means that he, some random sorcerer goes and, uh, you know, pops up, uh, uh, pops up a long distance snipe, and suddenly they've gotten their defense buffed. Uh, we actually saw that earlier as well. Ah, uh, yeah, the AI loves running Total Shield. Apparently, there's just a lot of lords and vampires just kind of hanging out in the local populace. Um, from there, we've got Rally, grants attack up, mind up, and haste to the character and all adjacent targets. Uh, same thing that the uh, uh, that the dog has, but it's uh, one of their uh, uh, one of their skills here instead. However, it's a decent uh, bit on the expensive side at 20 MP. From there, we have Ares Ram, does 0.9 times uh, physical attack damage in a line, uh, and has a 62% chance of inflicting res down. This is actually a weirdly good setup for, well, the previously mentioned Sorcerer thing, or one of the better variants of the Sorcerer we'll talk about later. Um, from there, we've got uh, Holy Burst, deals 1.1 times holy damage in an area around the character. It is exactly okay, but there's a lot of stuff that is weak to holy damage, so that's pretty useful. Then, one of the more interesting passives in the game, which is Equip All. Characters proficient with all weapons and armors and equip and can equip any of them. Um, so they are, functionally speaking, your Onion Knight with Siege Equipment. <laughs> um, and then from there, Cleave. Character gets another turn after felling an enemy, only recurs uh, once per natural turn. Zero MP is gained on this turn, does not trigger if target has rebirth. Um, and Cleave, honestly, by itself would probably be enough to throw them up to S tier. So, with all of it, I'm gonna leave them at an A. Their their skills are pretty pretty darn cool. Like I love the visuals on their skills. I love the uh, the theming of them just running around with a bunch of pocket siege equipment. Uh, they're the Lord not because they're you know just the leader in title alone, but they just actually have a pocket army with them at all times. <laughs> I love that. Thematically, it's probably one of my favorites. No questions asked. Do I see them winning against most of these other ones? No. Are they way more tricky? Yes, and I love that. Um, so to me, they actually do feel pretty similar to the Fellblade there in terms of just having a good mix of bulk and uh, and kind of kind of a tricky potential there. But yeah, I love uh, I love that class. All right, next up is Princess. Uh, 
Okay, that one does feel like it belongs in C, but let's go ahead and double check. Um, because every... It's... Okay, if you haven't been able to tell, yes, there's supposed to be a combination of, uh, of uh, Tartaros and Kashua, probably. <laughs> um, if I were to guess. Because, like, there's no way that that's not, not Tardy, there's no way that uh, that's not supposed to be Kashua. Anyway, um... I like to think that they were referencing the Tactics Ogre memes, but uh, this is the counterpart to the Lord here. Um, so their growths are basically fantastic MP, kind of uh, average on most things, but high on mind and decent on health. Um, but they're kind of a mixed bag caster. Uh, again, this feels very, very similar to uh, uh, to the, uh, the Tactics Ogre Princess, actually. So we've got Holy, deals one times Holy damage in a small area, Revive, revives a ally on the given title, uh, tile, and, uh, um, huh, they do actually say given title. Uh, it's a miss, uh, miss, uh, spelling over here in the wiki, oh no. That gives them 25% uh, HP. Total shield, uh, just like the Lord gets, because it's only ladies that can become princesses. Um, you get heal 2, holy 2, holy locust, uh, which I believe might actually be unique to them. Uh, quicken, uh, which uh, I would argue is one of the best abilities on this list, uh, giving a target an, an, an immediate turn. Uh, mass heal, equip all, and double cast. So, okay, a couple of notes on this as to why I personally would put them down to C. Double cast, amazing, very expensive. <laughs> Uh, like, when it comes to double cast, uh, usually when you see the AI running it, it's like they've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of very cheap spells that they go and spam in different directions. Um, as far as getting the most potentially out of it, especially, again, if you're later on in the game when you actually get this class, um, the MP cost required to keep that going is pretty extensive. So, theoretically, amazing. More often than not, you just won't have enough gas in the tank to make it happen. Mostly what it's useful for is something like Revive plus, you know, plus Quicken or something. Like, you actually uh, get somewhere to the tune of, like, 30, 40 MP, you uh, support them with a um, uh, with a Gadgeteer or something, and then you just, uh, you know, Revive one person, attack another direction. Very useful for those situations. Um, uh, equip All is interesting, which allows you to give them a weird oddball of a bunch of different pieces of equipment. Um, most of their abilities are stuff that you probably would have had from the Mender already anyway. Uh, their attacks and things are okay, I guess. Uh, I know any time I used the Princess, I wasn't exactly too blown away by their ability to attack things, but Quicken and Double Cast were probably the ones that stuck out. Um, again, it's the expense that, that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a problem. Um, so, so, give them something like a Mana Font, uh, give them, um, uh, let's see... It's probably uh, uh, like Mana Expert or whatever it's called, uh, the one that starts you off with 20 MP. Uh, combine that with Mana Font, you can have somebody that can just sort of mostly keep up for the uh, for the majority of the fight. Support them with a Gadgeteer, support them with a uh, Mana Stone or something like that. Um, you know, uh, something like a patented usage uh, Mana Stone at the very start uh, could do some pretty good stuff if you have your team all set up for something like that. Um, but yeah, I feel like a lot of the stuff that they can do, somebody else could have already kind of done by this point. It's a good class, though. It's, uh, it's... I guess C is kind of unfair, because double cast is pretty good. Uh... Eh... They're just kind of good all around. Maybe we just put them in B. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, see what the uh, note section says. So, Quicken inflicts two rounds of exhaustion, preventing them from getting any further turns. We already know that. Um, when using double cast, you can move before or after using both spells, but not in between. Yep. Uh, XP gained is reduced by 50% as before. And then their mastery bonus is attack, mind, def, and resistance by 5, as well as a 5% resistance to holy. It's like, this is one of those classes that you really want to go through for practically anybody for the purpose of getting all of their stuff, uh, but you probably wouldn't be necessarily staying as this class. Like, Equip All is good, but I feel like in most cases you can find kind of better things to fill that slot. Uh, most classes are pretty good at using the equipment that they already want to use anyway, uh, so it's mostly use, uh, useful for oddball builds. Uh, like, just, let's say you wanted to use, I don't know, Dual wielding double hammers on a ranger, uh, ranger or something. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, but actually, come to think of it, that probably would take too many skill. Or that would have to be on a mercenary to do that. And then at that point, you can already do it through other means anyway. Eh. Whatever. It's got potential. It's got potential for something. Um, 
but I personally wouldn't wouldn't end up uh, sticking with this one. Like uh, right now, on uh, on my current playthrough, I have a uh, Beastmaster slash uh, Princess uh, type situation, and they basically get rolled over every fight that they get into, but they're neat to play around with. Okay, uh, next we'll talk about the Vessel. Uh, so Vessel is... let me see which picture I had for these guys. Um, Alright, it's doing its thing again, so it's gonna be this one. Alright, off the top of my head, this one... I feel like has to stick and see. Let's see if I'm correct on this, or if I'm gonna go and talk myself down again. So, great mind growths, awful speed, great MP growths, um, alright, abilities are as follows, because these guys are functionally a summoner. Uh, so, we've got Nameless One, deals 1.25 holy damage to the target, okie dokie, it's a single target attack. Um, we've got uh, Ippocampus, uh, deals 1.65 water uh, damage in a cone. Uh, Again, just kind of cool, I guess. Uh, Hallowed Mind. Character gains a bonus to healing or damage the next turn after using a regular attack. 0.45 for using a regular melee attack. 0.35 for using a ranged regular attack. If I recall correctly, uh, this also works with counterattacks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so basically, you want to take a turn to attack or counterattack or whatever else in between your regular attacks to get this bonus. Uh, from there, we've got uh, Avernal, deals 1.6 times uh, fire damage in a small area. Uh, you get the general idea. You get a like 1, uh, 1.2 to 1.6 uh, kind of uh, a bonus uh, elemental attack with a weird pattern to it. It's like we've, we've already had area, we've had line, we've had cone. Um, uh, from there, we've got Hallowed Body. Uh, this is the same thing the, um, uh, the Ursini had, uh, which increases attack by 20% of mind and mind by 20% of attack. Uh, Hallowed Soul. When a character is dealt elemental damage, they gain a buff uh, that increases their resistance to that element. They only gain protection to the last element they were damaged with. In my mind, this is like the kind of a, a shittier version of the, um, uh, what is it, uh, that, uh, that offensive elemental bonus, so like elemental mastery or whatever it's called. Because um, it only gives you resistance against that thing. Uh, useful versus bosses, I don't feel it's useful against much else. Uh, Kitsukadl, uh deals 1.5 times thunder in a line. Uh, Sihi, I think it's how that's pronounced. Sai, si Sui, I don't know, whatever. Deals 1.3 times mind damage in a small area around the caster, also restores 5 MP, so it's just a refresh move. Fafner deals 2.3 times earth damage of... Uh, uh, to the target from a distance, cannot be evaded. And then finally, Immortal Souls deals two times uh, neutral magical damage in a small area. So, they're... Like, they're a very focused, uh, focused in basic caster, more or less. Uh, between all of these things, I feel like Hallowed Mind is useful for kind of, kind of particular builds. All the rest of this, I just feel like, is, is stuff that you could have done through other means on other classes up to this point. Um, remember that this is another one that you have to uh, get a, a special thing to unlock, so it's good in terms of getting somebody extra growths and stuff like that, um, but a lot of their attacks are in weird patterns, meaning that you gotta worry about friendly fire, which means you're basically uh, running them through their uh, basic uh, classes anyway. Um, however, if I recall correctly, I think you can combine their summons together with the, uh, the War Mage, uh, in which case they would be very good for that particular purpose because it, because it gets around the weird gimmick of the weird firing patterns. Because if those aren't a thing, uh, that is a good bit of extra bonus uh, that you're getting off those spells. Um, I don't remember actually testing that one, but that does seem like something that would work. Uh, so yeah, good, good spells, awkward to land, a class that's pretty good on offense, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I never really cared for the vessel. I, several pl playthroughs later, I just don't really <laughs> like the vessel personally. Okay, um, let's go over the notes here. So many of the vessel abilities are specials, not spells, as one might expect. Well, damn. Actually, true. Shoot. Yeah, never mind. That isn't going to combine with War Mage then. Oh man, I like the vessel even less now. Okay. So, they can't benefit from double cast, they can be used regardless of cripple or mute, uh, so I guess that's something, though that's weird, because that's usually for 
All right, whatever. Uh, they can crit if the versatile passive is equipped. Uh, counters such as evade magic and evade skill provide no protection against vessel abilities. Interesting. So I guess their ability is just to ignore counters to an extent. Helenwine's damage bonus will only apply on the first damaging part of any multi-damage ability. For example, dual wield, double cast, or infused edge, instead of increasing the damage of the full action. Uh, so this means... Now, I... What I was thinking while going over this is, when it comes to Infused Edge, I wonder if that first basic attack counts uh, for the purpose of improving improving everything. I'm going to have to test that later, because it is technically a basic attack for all intents and purposes, followed by a magical attack, which in theory should work really well for this, unless you have a counter attack, in which case you just kind of fuck yourself over. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to test that later. Okay. Uh, then Mastery Bonus is uh, MP plus 5, Mind plus 5, and then 5 Elemental Resistances across the board. Um, okay, more trivia for this. Uh, so, uh, several Vestal abilities are mythological references. Avernal is similar to Avernus, uh, the name of the volcanic crater near Kumai, Italy, uh, which ancient times believed was the entrance to the Underworld. Hippocampus is, uh, is a reference to the Hippocampus, a mythological creature with the upper body of a horse and the lower body of a fish. Kizakadal refers to exactly what it is. Fafner, same. Sai is similar to Psyche, which refers to both butterflies and the soul in ancient Greek. Interesting. Okie dokie, well, let's carry on. It's So far, it's the one that's had the longest trivia section, so that's something. Alright, uh, Lich. Now, to me, the Lich is like the vastly improved sorcerer. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and cover that one. So, growths-wise, fantastic mind, great health, average on everything else, uh, absolutely abysmal speed. Uh, so, train like, Lich is one of those classes you want to end up in, not that you want to grow in. Um, though it's not really like you have much of a choice, because the levels just sort of keep on going. Anyway, off the top of my head, I feel like Lich goes, uh, I feel like they're an S for me personally, but let's go ahead and potentially talk down on that one. Okay, so you've got Dark 1, Dark 2, Dark Locus, as you'd expect, doing 1.1, 1.65, and 2.2 uh, dark damage to a target. Uh, counter Poison counters any offensive action taken on the character by inflicting the offender with poison. Beauty. Reanimate resurrects a dead enemy as a cadaver that will attack foes until it falls. This will prevent the target unit from being revived by their own allies. One of my favorite skills in this entire game, because there's a lot of enemy units that will revive, that will be able to bring themselves back from the brink of pretty much dang near anything. Um, and so what you're able to do is reanimate them as a mindless zombie. So this prevents them from uh, uh, from going and actually getting revived further. Plus they fight for your team now, plus they further spread poison on top of that. Um, like, you don't control them, but they are a very useful just kind of random horde. Not to mention their stats usually suck, so they have a tendency to get targeted by enemy units. So they're a distraction, they're a free meat shield, they're a free damage sp uh, uh, spreader, a free de a debuff spreader, and you're preventing revives at the same time. Like, this is the way cooler version of Condemn from Tactic Soaker, because you condemn them very directly to a life as the undead. They never do explain this in lore, which is especially funny when your main character gets uh, killed and revived as a frickin' zombie, and then killed again <laughs> and vaporized, and then five seconds later, like, oh man, I can't believe we just won that fight. It's like, uh, carry a Harry back. <laughs> Anyway, uh, continuing on. Um, Chilling Touch. Probably one of my favorite passives. Characters' offensive actions have a chance to inflict slow on the target, and this is what makes them better than the Sorcerer. <laughs> we'll get to this in a second. Uh, dark Storm. Deals 0.85 to 1.3 times dark damage to all enemies on the map based on proximity. Now, Unlike many of the other basic elements, there's not too many things that are completely immune to dark. There's some, occasionally, sure, but at the same time, remember that this combines with their passive, uh, which allows them to inflict slow at the same time. So not only are they slowing, uh, are they damaging the entire map like the Sorcerer would have, but it also slows them down. Um, so it basically brings everybody to their level, which is why you want their skills on somebody else. Uh, like, especially uh, what's coming to mind right now is uh, Lich Lord uh, being a potentially very good combo. 
combo. Uh, they uh, they take in the uh, kind of the Lich's ability to slow stuff down, combine that in with a lot of their AoEs uh, from a lot of their uh, various ballistas and rams and things like that, um, and cavalry charges, and then slowing things down, um, and then basically finishing off with stuff like Dark Storm, slowing down the entire map. It is really, really good. I think this, I forget, but I think that actually does stack with Malice as well. Uh, which is that 10% uh, increase to uh, debuff chances. Anyway, uh, you got Dark Burst, which exists. Uh, Blood Magic, character uses HP rather than MP when using abilities, meaning that, yes, they are able to just, uh, let's say, set themselves up as a tank and just cast uh, using their MP instead. Uh, we'll use 2% of your HP instead of 1 MP, um, which is... Like, if you combine that with economy, that's also actually a surprisingly good deal, too, because uh, HP is a lot easier to come by than MP, so, uh, yeah. Uh, very, very good stuff there. Uh, Nightmare deals 1.1 times dark damage in a large area and has a 62% chance of inflicting poison. Um, so, yeah, you've got that as well uh, for slow plus poison. Like, Lich is, again, just better sorcerer with better utility across the board. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, reanimate will. Uh, this is the note section, by the way. Um, so uh, reanimate will summon a tier one cadaver. At level fifty, it'll summon a tier two uh, cadaver known as a rancorpse, and at level eighty, it'll summon a tier three cadaver known as the uh, how the f menonagogle, I guess. Uh, tier 2 and 3 cadavers will have poison as their counters instead of critical rebirth. Uh, the summoned unit is controlled by the AI. And then finally, their mastery bonus is a modest mind plus 5 and dark resistance plus 5. Because frankly, the class is so insanely overpowered before then. In fact, I would actually probably put this way the hell up here. Um, actually, yeah, you know what? I think there's a running theme now of liches reaching the top of my uh, tier lists. Anyway, let's continue on. We got a little bit more time for the moment anyway. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, we got this guy. Uh, no we don't. Let's, you know what, let's go ahead and go for one of the other ones here. Because I feel like this is one of the ones that I really wanted to cover last time and kind of forgot. Uh, we're gonna do a Samurai next. Um, now I feel like off the top of my head it's going to S, but we'll address that in a moment. It's actually specifically one of the Samurai skills, uh, Razor Wind, which takes so many of the already nutty builds that the AI could do and just it takes them up to 11. Like, things like a lot of your knockback moves are really, really strong, but you have to be at close range to use them. And suddenly they're like, oh, well, I guess I can use this at a distance now. Razor Wind, what can you do? <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, here's this, uh, you know, th this move that otherwise would have been, you know, barely able to reach you, and now it's able to reach your back row instead. Uh, they functionally cheat. Um, so let's go ahead and continue uh, looking over this thing. All right, so growth-wise, great HP, okay attack, pretty much average everywhere else. Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk abilities. So Overreach deals 1.2 times physical attack damage to the target, also inflicts de uh, defense down on the character, counts as a regular attack. So just, uh, you know, basically a attack plus uh, plus defense breach, not bad, fairly cheap. Unbreakable Spirit uh, is, a, is their first passive. Every debuff on the character will increase their attack and mind by 10%. This is useful on a lot of things, <laughs> um, especially uh, especially uh, if you happen to, let's say, run into a monster unit that just stack like four or five debuffs on you at the same time. Um, this is one of the few things that kind of hard counters Victory Dance, because you just gave somebody a 30% increase to their attack. Like, especially if you have somebody that uses uh, stats that, or uh, uses skills that use both. Now they're getting both of those stacked up. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, Spirit Bow does 50% uh, uh, damage uh, to the target, forces the target to change direction to face the character, and inflicts defense down and res down. So, an interesting case of a, um, uh, of a uh, directional changing move, which uh, I think that might be the only one off the top of my head. All right, Meditate removes all debuffs from the character, Restoring 0.6 times mind for each debuff removed also sets evasion to zero until the character's next turn. A very interesting kind of reset for themselves. I don't see this used that often, but it is an interesting reset. Uh, Wind Spirit, 0.35 uh, times uh, physical damage in a large area around the character, forces targets to change direction to face the character, and will inflict cripple. Um, yeah. Car weirdly counters a lot of things. Um, it's... Very inconvenient to run into, kind of difficult to find a use for when playing yourself, but uh, but yeah, very interesting properties to that one that are pretty unique. Uh, then we get Razor Wind. 
Uh, I would argue the thing that throws them up into S tier here. So for an added cost of 6 MP, it allows the character to use any single target skill with a range of at least 1 as if it had a range of 4. Uh, so yeah, just this applies to anything. Like, <laughs> any kind of single target thing that has a range to it, uh, again, of at least 1 as long as it's, as it's not targeting yourself, is at a distance. This affects everything. Like, throughout the entire game. Uh, if you wanted to, let's say, use that uh, that embracing move that the vampire had at a, at a long distance, if I recall correctly, I saw somebody get uh, sniped by that using Razor Wind. Um, if you wanted to, let's say... Um, uh, I'll just kind of go on over the list here. Uh, let's say uh, you had your... Uh, who the hell has that, has that one move? Um, I, I think it was uh, it was actually a combination of a uh, ranger uh, samurai uh, that ended up using sniper shot across the damn map uh, on somebody. Um, like they they can cheese so many things with this. And again, the potential is there for you to do this yourself at any time, uh, relatively early in the game uh, when you end up unlocking the samurai. Um, but the AI, especially if you're on New Game Plus, will abuse the hell out of this skill all the time. You will learn to hate it. <laughs> So, just, uh, just, yeah, um, absolutely broken ability. Anyway, uh, Restless Spirit deals 0.7 physical damage that uh, ignores the target's defense, also inflicts a res down on the character, uh, kind of like the, uh, drill arm that the, uh, Gadgeteer gets. Critical Focus grants two times focus to the character when HP is critical after taking damage. Character also uses Defend and takes half damage from all attacks until their next turn. This is also very, very good, because uh, two times focus is just like, two times damage is on top of uh, something like Razor Wind, some of the strongest one-shot potential in the game all built into one class. <clears throat> Alright, next is Adrenaline. Deals 0.5 times physical attack damage to the target, also inflicts uh, bleed on the character, counts as a regular attack, um, and will use the uh, equipped weapons uh, element and debuffs. The character's next turn will come 50% uh, faster. So basically you do uh, half your normal damage, but you speed your own turn up by 50%. Uh, again, an interesting move, kind of situational, but it works. Alright. And then this is the one that you see a whole lot, because it's got a funny uh, letterbox effect that happens. So, like, you know how old samurai movies uh, have that old uh, letterbox that comes down for dramatic scenes? So, what they do is they do a combination of Critical Focus, Razor Wind, and Finisher. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love this combination when it one-shots anybody. So it deals 2.4 times physical attack damage to the target. Also inflicts attack down on the character. Counts as a regular attack and will use the equipped weapons element and debuffs. But effectively what it's saying by 2.4 times is that if, for example, you knock a samurai down to, uh, down to critical health, they will now double their damage. Uh, they will be harder to kill, and pro you probably won't be able to finish them off due to defend. Um, and then they come in with a long-range finisher, <laughs> which is supposed to be a single, t a single tile away, but now they can use it at a distance of four uh, to effectively do five times their normal damage to somebody. <laughs> um, and if I recall correctly, that I think I've seen that stack with Boone, because I've seen that hit over a thousand before. Um, I'm not certain off the top of my head how that all stacks up, but I know I've seen that hit over a thousand before. So yeah, finisher's pretty nuts, and then finally Spirit Sword deals 2.6 times physical damage uh, using Mind, also inflicts Mind down. So technically Spirit Sword could do the same thing, it's technically a bit cheaper and a bit more versatile than the previous one, but you'll usually see Finisher, and honestly, if it wasn't for that letterbox effect, I would be kind of annoyed, but just the fact that they're referencing old movies like that, it, it works. I don't know, it just works. All right, let's see, Razor Wind uh, under the notes. So Razor Wind adds a menu option to the character that allows an applicable skill to be selected to have its range enhanced. Razor Wind has a vertical reach of 12. So basically, everywhere. Uh, mastery bonus is an attack bonus, a, a rare speed bonus, as well as crit plus two. So incredibly good class. Um, yeah, I guess we gotta put it way the hell up here. <laughs> like of the DLC classes, uh, that one's uh, one of the nuttiest. Um, like, uh, if there's a class to make uh, cases, like, full-on full, uh, full -on broken, it would probably be that one. Um, and then lastly, uh, since, uh, you know, since we're going to have a fourth uh, tier list of this whole thing, uh, the last one I want to uh, I want to talk about here today is probably my favorite class in the whole game, and that's the Gadgeteer. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a class whose skills are almost entirely based off your exploration of the world map, which is just cool. Um, okay. 
So, growths are pretty garbo, actually. So, good health, decent attack, decent defense, decent mind, decent resistance, but they are average across the board. They are strictly decent at everything. So, um, skills are as follows. Uh, and I'm actually just going to put them up into, uh, in, into probably about here, uh, right from the get-go. So, zero cost gadgets, it's what they start with. Use a variety of high-tech gadgets for a uh, versatile arsenal. Gadgets must be crafted or found before they can be used. And yeah, this is, this is a class whose uh, skills are constantly unlocking throughout the entire game. You have to find every one of their skills. All right. Perfect Focus Passive, uh, character deals 0.32 times increased damage uh, and healing with full HP. Um, I don't think that's very good. I love their skills on everybody else. Um, it's actually a, a, a rare case where you can give somebody a full skill list even if they've never trained to something before. Um, Perfect Focus is, I would say, probably potentially very good on something like a, uh, like a Sorcerer. Um, or, or like a gunner or a sniper or something like that. It's kind of easy to get screwed out of that bonus, though, is the problem. Uh, absorb mana. Again, another skill that's useful on everybody else. Uh, when a character is targeted by an offensive ability that has an MP cost, they will gain the same amount of MP that was used. Only triggers if the ability would do damage other than healing to the target. Um, and most of their abilities are fairly cheap anyway. Plus, there's somebody that hands out MP on their own. Uh, so I would say... This is really useful on anybody that's got a lot of high expense uh, type abilities. Um, actually, I would say it's probably very useful on somebody like a ranger, uh, who uh, typically can make a big comeback with their sniper shot. Uh, then we have Mana Expert. Uh, this is one of the best abilities uh, for very specific builds. So character starts, starts off with 15 MP instead of 0. Um, and yes, it is only a 15 MP difference. But that by itself is enough to make a lot of builds uh, have a ton of uh, instant potential when they're going and starting. Uh, combining Mana Expert uh, with, um, uh, with Initiative allows somebody to start off their turn with uh, 25 MP on top of being able to already take a turn. So for example, uh, they, they take their Initiative turn, go, they go and uh, put down a trap. Um, then uh, courtesy of Mana Expert, they already have 25 ready to go. So I think it was something like Righteous Blade or whatever else that could already do that. So potentially a um, uh, like a, a combination of uh, whatever it was a uh, peddler and uh, uh, and paladin could potentially be really scary, or something like a lich. Um, there's a lot of potential uh, for this to do stuff. All right. Anyway, now let's go over to their actual skills, though, because most of that stuff is useful bits and pieces to throw on everybody else. Uh, the Tinker is one of the few cases of a class that you honestly probably never will even consider keeping them as that class, because there's very little reason to. Most of their abilities are, again, better on everybody else, but their skill list is awesome. Alright, so first is the Springer. Deals 0.9 times physical damage and pushes the target away by one tile. Depending on terrain, this could have interesting results. So this is basically a springy boxing glove uh, that you can use to, let's say, punch somebody into water for an instant kill. Uh, you can uh, drop somebody off a cliff. You can knock a unit into another unit for just an instant 400 freaking damage or whatever. Um, very solid there. Impalatron uh, uh, deals 0.65 physical damage that ignores the target's defense. A very good counter to a lot of those uh, elemental blobs and things. Uh, when no one else has, for example, spells on hand, like you forgot to bring a wizard or something, this just allows you to get past their, uh, you know, their high resistance bullshit, as it were. Harmonizer has a 62% chance of inflicting sleep in a large area. Potentially, this could just disable five units at once. Great stuff. Uh, Shockertron grants rebirth to the target. A unit with rebirth automatically comes back to life after falling in combat. Um, this is their most expensive ability. It's one of the few reasons you'd keep that mana ability on them. I personally liked combining this together with uh, Mana Font. Just have them keep repeatedly running around the map and giving people rebirth. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Speed Generator grants haste in a small area. A unit with haste will get its turn faster. Remember how I was putting down the previous units that got haste in a small area? These guys get it too on top of all this other stuff. Demoralizer inflicts defense down and res down on the target. Considering these guys are fairly quick in most situations, this means that you can potentially set them up for a quick sweep early on. Energizer, uh, one of the best support abilities in the game, restores 20 MP to the target. This is basically the same thing as your MP crystal, but they can do it whenever they want, and it only costs them 8 to do it. So they're gaining a profit on using MP. Uh, they always have to use it on somebody else, though. Uh, one of the weird limitations of their skill list is that they have to use their abilities on somebody else at all times. Uh, Surpriser Plus. 
Uh, it deals 0.9 times magical attack and mind damage to the target and inflicts Weaken, a way easier version of the thing that uh, the werewolf uh, decided to make way more complicated down the line. Um, we've got the Molecular Infuser, grants attack up and mind up to the target. Again, useful for boosting any one of your back row guys. Uh, Reflectron, grants uh, thorns to the target. A unit with thorns will automatically reflect some damage uh, when taking damage from any source. Um, again, just like the, uh, I think it was Alchemistic or whatever else, um, except it's a single target instead of an AoE. But still, good stuff. Uh, not to mention it's very cheap, it's only four. Uh, Absorber Plus uh, deals uh, 0.5 times magical attack and mind to the target and re uh, to the target's MP, so it just drains the target of MP if you're having issues with a caster. Electro Constrictor uh, deals 0.9 times magical attack damage to the target and has a 50% chance of inflicting root, so it just pre uh, prevents a target from moving at all, which is pretty darn useful. It's only 50%, but again, it's one of the cheapest uh, bind moves that there is, outside of like the uh, leg shot on the uh, ranger there. Demolecularizer deals one time, uh, one times uh, magical damage to uh, a small area. You may notice a lot of this stuff is scaling off of both attack and mind, meaning that this has a ton of uh, potential for scaling up really well. Uh, but this is functionally a neutral version of uh, your basic uh, magic attacks. Uh, Dispelatron removes all buffs from a target. Uh, this includes things like Rebirth. Uh, Healbot 3000 is exactly okay. It, it deals 0.85, uh, or it restores 0.85 uh, uh, HP um, and uh, gives renewal to a target. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just a small heal plus renewal. And then their mastery bonus is again a modest uh, health 2, defense 2, res 2. But, like, you can see how much utility they have. There is almost no situation in which you can't find some use for all of their toolbox. Um, on top of this, again, for any character that is new, for any character that just wants something to always have have to do or whatever else, um, this is such a beautiful grab bag of some of the best stuff in the whole game that you can just instantly pop on anybody. You just hand them the toolbox, like, just a toolbox, like, congratulations, you are now the engineer for our map, you know? <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, all right, so... That being said, uh, the next one, next one will go ahead and wrap everything up, because uh, this one's been going for a decently long time. All right, so I'll see you in the next one then. Thank you guys for stopping by. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost to the end. All right, see you guys then. Bye.